Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. I'm your host, Bob Powell, and this is going to be a show you won't likely forget anytime soon. You know, when I first moved to northern Michigan, one of the first things that I did was get arrested when I went to investigate the explosion out at the Alpena Combat Readiness Training Center. And over the next few weeks, between my son and I, we were pulled over by police from all different agencies at least a half a dozen times. And uh, it was starting to get a, a little bit ridiculous there for a while. Uh, I'm pretty sure that at first they thought that I was just some kind of troublemaker. But each time that I came into contact with law enforcement, I took the time to talk to them and get to know them. I told them who I was and what I was trying to do. I shared my Christian beliefs with them and found to uh, my pleasant surprise that nearly all of the officers that I spoke with were also Christians. Now, instead of provoking the police by walking around town like some do with my Mini 14, <laughs> Daring them to arrest me for exercising my constitutional right to bear arms, I did exactly the opposite. When I knew that I was going to be out filming a show, carrying my assault rifle, I would just make a phone call to uh, 911 uh, or a friend at the local sheriff's department or uh, police department, you know, whoever would have been responsible for that particular jurisdiction where I was going to be filming at the time. And I would tell them where I was going to be and what I was going to do, what time I was going to be there, just in case a nervous citizen called 911 and reported a man with a rifle walking down the street. And, and believe me, they appreciated it. Makes their jobs a lot easier. And not once was I harassed by any of the law enforcement agencies. You know, once they got to know me, uh, you know, everything worked out pretty well. You know, as a result, I like to think that I've got a pretty good working relationship with law enforcement in, in Michigan, and, and it's based on mutual respect. And I was even invited to uh, share my views with a gathering of law enforcement officers and elected officials last December. Uh, you need to watch this episode right here and share it with your sheriff and uh, your town council, your county commission, you know, whatever. Uh, because this is really happening, folks. We're in a lot of trouble. Now, the trust that I've en engendered with law enforcement was born out again yet this morning when I received a telephone call from a, a commander in one of the many agencies here in Michigan who had information that Camp Grayling down in uh, the lower peninsula of Michigan has just taken possession of more than 100 United Nations MRAPs. Those are mine resistant ambush protected vehicles for those that don't know that acronym. And he introduced me to a trucker with firsthand knowledge of this delivery. And you are going to hear his story next right here on The Truth is Viral. You don't talk about it. Parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep this frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that that is that is, should, should not be even entertained for a minute. That powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy bum. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now. Here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. We've watched as the Department of Homeland Security has been beefing up tactical units in more than 70 different agencies since Barack Hussein Obama promised to raise a civilian army equal to the United States military. We cannot continue to rely only on our military 
in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. I was a colonel, I'm a retired colonel in the Marine Corps. I saw a sign back there that said, we want more Mayberry and less Fallujah. And I spent a year in Fallujah. And you know what? When I first got there, I didn't have armored uh, Humvees. And I spent, uh, I traveled over 10,000 miles over there. And sometimes you got to deal with and go with what you have. And so that's part of the job, for one. The second thing is, though, when I was in Iraq, I was in charge, I was the Ministry of Defense Coordinator. My job was to man, train, and equip the Iraqi Army in Al-Anbar, Najaf, Karbala, and northern Babila provinces. And I can tell you right now, well, somebody had the great idea to get rid of the Iraqi Army, so when we rebuilt it, we did everything we could to make it as strong as possible. And I'll tell you right now, Homeland Security would kick their butts in a week. What's happening here is we're building a domestic military because it's unlawful or unconstitutional to use American troops on American soil. So what we're doing is we're building a military. My best friend, who's a SWAT officer in Nashua, who came to Iraq with me to train the Iraqi police, sent me an email with a picture of him in the media on the streets of Watertown, Mass, wearing the exact same combat gear that we had in Iraq, only it was a different color. And what, the way we do things in the military is called task organization. You take a command, and then you attach units to it in order to accomplish the mission. What's happening is Homeland Security is pre-staging gear, equipment, consistent. What they're trying to do is use standardized vehicles, standardized equipment. I saw a picture in the Boston Globe during the marathon bombing where there was a state police officer. Actually, there were two officers. They both had identical helmets, black jackets, weapons, everything I wore in Iraq, only it was all blue. The officer on one side had a big patch on his back that said Massachusetts State Police. Another officer next to him, his patch said Boston Police. And so what we're doing here, and let's not kid about it, we're building a domestic army and we're shrinking the military because the government is afraid of its own citizens. The last time more than 10 terrorists were in the same place at one time was September 11th, and all these vehicles in the world wouldn't have prevented it, nor would it have helped anybody. So I don't know where we're going to use this many vehicles and this many troops. Concord is just one little cog in the wheel. We're building an army over here, and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? Last week, you heard former CIA spy Jim Garrow talk about Obama's plans to institute a Marxist Muslim takeover of the United States right here on this very program. We've watched as Obama has armed agencies that have no business with SWAT teams with two billion rounds of hollow point and sniper ammunition, 7,000 fully automatic assault rifles, and 2,700 MRAPs. That's enough hardware to fight an Iraq intensity conflict for the next 24 years. Obama has put these weapons of war into the hands of over 70 different agencies as diverse as the National Weather Service, the Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Federal Reserve, which isn't even a part of the government, and even the Library of Congress has a SWAT team. God forbid you should have an overdue library book. We watched as Boston was shut down by a de facto declaration of martial law. We watched as masked goons pointed their rifles in the windows of, of the houses of innocent people, dragging them out of their homes without so much as a search warrant or even probable cause. We've watched as coffin liners have been stockpiled by the millions. We've watched as the Department of Homeland Security agents have been training to fill them by shooting at paper targets of the most vulnerable in our society. They're being desensitized so that they will not hesitate when it comes time to gun down a pregnant woman, a grandmother, or a child. Last year, I went to Camp Grayling in the lower peninsula of Michigan to see what I could see. Camp Grayling has long been suspected of being a major FEMA camp, and I wanted to find out the truth. While I was unable to get on the base myself, I did run across a soldier who had firsthand knowledge of the training facilities at Camp Grayling and we spoke at length about his experiences, and you can watch that episode by clicking this link right here. And my guest today is a truck driver. 
a hardworking American who was introduced me to, or introduced to me by a, a mutual friend in law enforcement. Now, this, this friend in law enforcement is somebody that I know very well over the last two years, and I would, without a doubt, without a single moment's hesitation, place my life in this man's hands. So I trust him. When he brings me a source like this, this is somebody that we need to listen to. So thank you for being on The Truth is Viral. Uh, I'll just call you, uh, what, uh, what should we call you? Uh, I don't think Mr. X or anything like that. Let's just say, I'll, I'll just call you brother because that's what you are. you are. You are my brother in Christ. You're my brother's brother. And if he trusts you, then, then I trust you. So uh, first off, how, how did you get in touch with me? How did you know to, to bring this information to this program? Um, through our mutual friend, uh, the commander, um, he's a commander with the um, I had contacted him initially. I had heard of your show, but I didn't know how to contact you directly. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad that he, you know, did, you know, hook us up. Because you've got a, a, a fascinating and, and frightening story to tell. So this, you were uh, talking with other drivers at, uh, at, a, at a truck stop down, down near Camp Grayling just this past week. Uh, do you remember exactly what day that was that this delivery of over 100 United Nations MRAPs took place? Um, the driver, when I talked to him, it was Friday afternoon. Um, the delivery he was referring to had been made uh, earlier in the week, uh, Monday night. Okay, so the delivery would have been on Monday the 14th, is that right? Yep. Okay, what time of the night or day or night was, were the, was this delivery taking place? Um, he said they all delivered uh, the, the convoy that he was with. Uh, he said they delivered late at night. He said 11.30-ish, midnight possibly. Okay, and uh, how were these MRAPs delivered? What type of trucks, you know, brought them to Camp Grayling? There were uh, four uh, commercial vehicles, civilian commercial vehicles, uh, escorted uh, by three Humvees. Um, he said they, had, they were led by one Humvee. Uh, they put two of the commercial trucks behind it. They put a second Humvee behind the first two commercial trucks put two more commercial trucks in the convoy and then a third Humvee. Um, he said they drove only at night and drove all secondary roads. He said they never hit an expressway. Um, and he said they were never allowed out of the convoy. He said they were always uh, in the presence of these three Humvees. Okay. How many MRAPs were on each truck? Uh, there was two on each truck in the convoy he was in. And how many trucks were there all together? Uh, four. Four in just that one convoy? Yep. Okay, but uh, how many convoys were there all together? Uh, he didn't know. Um, all he knew was there had been prior convoys and that there were some to follow. Um, they kept them small. Um, attracts less attention, I'm assuming. Right. Uh, just by way of clarification, the number of 100 MRAPs came from our mutual friend in law enforcement. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess he knows the total from possibly a, a different source. Uh, now, how do we know that these were United Nations MRAPs? Were they, did they have United Nations markings on them? Were they painted white or light blue? Actually, he said no. Uh, he said they looked very similar uh, in uh, camo type paint as to any of our vehicles. Um, something that I have been noticing is that a lot of our newer military vehicles, uh, the markings on them are subdued. Uh, you really have to look close to see 
any markings on them. Yeah. So and he said these were very similar. Uh, he said, but being you know up close to them, uh, he was able to distinguish that they were UN marked and not US. Ah, uh, okay. So he actually was well, obviously being the driver, he was within touching distance of these vehicles, so he could you know identify them rather easily. Yeah, he had to secure them once they were loaded. So. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, other than just obvious armor, were the were the were the outriding Humvees armed? Did they have uh, fifty caliber machine guns mounted, or were they keeping a real low profile? Uh, he said they were pretty low key. He said he's sure that the uh, they were armed, uh, but nothing outwardly obvious. Okay. Now, did these convoys take place all in one night, or were they spread out over a couple of days? Um, they were spread out. Um, his was the first one of last week. Uh, he said he knew there were some in the prior week, and he said he knew there was more to come during the duration of last week. Geez, this is you know you know really unnerving. Uh, it is, and that's it. It took me off guard. I mean, I know this stuff is going on. You know, everybody reads it and, and hears about it. Um, just that this, this particular instance was a little close to home. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, just a little over a month ago, here in, in Alpena, I ran into four uh, Spetsnats in the local Walmart, of all places. Uh, if you want to watch that episode, you can click this right here. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any video or uh, pictures of them because I was freaked out. <laughs> you know, uh, this the Walmart <laughs> is the last place that you would expect to run into Russian special forces. But uh, yeah. other than other than just the look, you know, I, I I know what special forces look like. These guys look like they could you know chew glass and spit concertina wire. Uh, and they all had identical little fag bags, uh, little purses, and you could see the outline of their guns. And when, uh, and you know, when you're going on liberty, if, if they were here for a legitimate training exercise, you're going out on liberty, you don't take a weapon. Okay, that's the no. quickest way to, to get you sent back to whatever country it is you're from. And, uh, but, but the topper of it was when they started talking to each other in Russian. Okay, so that that kind of uh, you know blew blew their cover, and, and I started following them, and uh, I was wearing my Marine Corps T-shirt, packing this huge gun I got on my side, so I was hardly inconspicuous, and 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 they uh, they made me right away, and one of them broke off and, and and turned around and started circling around behind me, so you know I, I broke off myself and went outside to uh, grab my camera. I wanted to get some kind of proof, but when I got back inside, I looked all over for them and they were gone. You know, I I, I had to break off. Uh, it's just, you know, discretion is the better part of valor. Last place I want sure. to get into a gunfight with Russian special forces is in the baked goods aisle of Walmart. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll, uh, we'll save that for another day. Uh, but, well, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. That I talked to he said they did not, he said he did, his convoy uh, did not pass through anything that resembled a main gate at a military base. Yeah. Um, he said there, this particular convoy, uh, and he, he assumed that the others had as well, um, they unloaded in a, a large gravel lot in a, a big wooded area off from a secondary road. Uh, he said they were not on a base. Um, he just said he knew he was, you know, that it was grayling. Yeah. Do um, you do you have any idea he, what side of the base it was on? Was it on the north side, east, west, south? Truck stop that I I talked to this gentleman in um, was actually on the south side. He had come back out to the expressway. Uh, via the secondary roads and spent the night um, was on the south side of 
uh, the actual town of Grayling. So I, I would hazard a guess that, that he came from probably the southeast or direct south area of the base. Yeah, I'm, I'm picturing the map of uh, Camp Grayling in my mind. I've I've looked at it uh, so many times, and and I think I I can uh, see where you're uh, where you're talking about. I'll I'll put that uh, map up. You should be looking at it right now. As a matter of fact, where did they pick these MRAPs up? Where where did they uh, load them onto their trucks? He didn't give me a town name. Um... Like I said, I, I was kind of taken off guard by the fact that it was so close to home. I, I didn't think to ask a uh, more pertinent or direct question. Um, he just said that they had come from out west. Did he uh, mention anything about any of the uh, troops that were accompanying these vehicles speaking in a language other than English? Uh, he said they, they very rarely spoke. Um, they were just given directions when they loaded to just follow these Humvees. Were, was there anything distinctive about their uniforms? Were they American troops? Uh, again, something I didn't think to, to ask, uh, and he didn't mention anything. Yeah, okay. Uh, have Is there anything else that you think that uh, my viewers should know before we conclude this interview? Uh, yeah. I think we're in for uh, worlds of trouble, um, and I don't think it's that far away. Well, I, uh, I'm going to have to agree with you there, brother. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for coming on The Truth is Viral. I, I appreciate uh, your courage and, and your honesty. And, and, brother, I want you to stay safe out there. Keep your eyes open, and uh, you know if you see or, or hear of anything else, please... You know, give me a call and, and put the word out there, too, to other truckers. Let them know that uh, there is a place that they can come when they see something, when they hear something. Like Janet Napolitano says, see something, say something. Well, you see something, say something to me. And uh, we need to get this information out there because, folks, I'm telling you, it's coming in from all different vectors I'm, I've got so many sources both here in the United States and overseas. If we are not under martial law a year from now, I will be out of my mind amazed. They've got all of the chess pieces in place. It's just going to take one spark to declare martial law. And I believe that that spark will be uh, the Gog Magog War, which is brewing right now in Syria. We'll be back with more right after this. I just wanted to take an opportunity to remind everybody that you need to subscribe to the Truth Is Viral blog at bobpowell.blogspot.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and on Google+. Go check out our forum at ttiv.forummotion.com. You also need to subscribe to our other channel at, uh, on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash user slash the truth is viral. That's where I'll be putting up my new three-hour weekly call-in show that's being hosted by Pete Santilli's Guerrilla Media Network. Thank you, Mr. Santilli. You are one hell of a Marine. Hoorah. Uh, all these links are, are featured or in the, in the description below. All you got to do is just go down there and click on them. And if you are financially able, please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com and leave me a generous donation because it does take money to produce this show. And, uh, you know, I'm living on disability, and, and they took $600 of that away when I started to produce this show, when I dared to try to go back to work, when I told the truth. They tried to financially beat me down. Well, I've been living with that for a year, and they haven't done it yet. It's been tough, but I have gone through it. And uh, my, my whole family has gone through it. And every now and then we do get a donation. They seem to come right when we need them the most and uh, if, if God impresses on your heart that this is something that you should do then please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com and, and join my army uh, the truth corps by making a monthly donation or you can just leave a one-time donation in, in whatever amount you desire and it will help us buy Skype subscriptions uh, the separate minutes that you have to buy for Skype that's how I conduct my interviews and uh, 
the, the high speed internet that I have to have to get my sh shows up and put them on YouTube, uh, ink cartridges, paper, office supplies that any small business needs to have. I've got to pull that out of my pocket <laughs> and my pockets are pretty shallow these days. Uh, we even lost our Medicaid. So you got medical bills piling up that will probably never be paid. But uh, you know, if I ended up in a hospital, I don't care. Because the time is now to go for broke. We don't have much time left. So if you believe what, in what I'm doing, if you think that the truth is viral is worth a little bit of uh, fake fiat money, then please help us as we try to wake other people up, save lives, and win souls for Jesus Christ. Folks, we're in a lot of trouble. You know, before she flew the coop, Janet Napolitano issued guidelines that make just about everybody a possible domestic terrorist, except card-carrying members of ACORN, of course. Obama has declared the United States a battlefield. He's already used his executive authority to murder Americans including a 16-year-old child, without ever bothering to charge them with a crime in a court of law. They didn't even get a military tribunal before they were sentenced to death by Caesar Obama. Why is it that we can go into Pakistan and arrest alleged 9-11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, putting him on trial in New York City, but we can't afford these three American citizens their protections under the Fifth Amendment? There's something wrong with that. Even the ACLU called Obama judge, jury, and executioner right here on this very program last year. You can click this link to watch that interview with ACLU attorney in charge of targeted assassinations by the name of Nate Wessler. For the ACLU to turn on a sitting Democratic president like that is unheard of. For a lawyer like Nate Wessler to call somebody that hasn't yet been convicted of murder, judge, jury, and executioner. Well, like I said, you know, there's something wrong. James Madison said that whenever uh, the powers of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches rest in the hands of one man, that's the very definition of tyranny. So when Obama can sign a piece of paper and order somebody's death, without ever charging them with a crime in a court of law, what is he? He's a tyrant. No judicial oversight, no congressional review. Just Obama and his pen. I don't know about you, but I don't trust that bastard as far as I can spit. The National Defense Authorization Act allows the United States military to arrest any U.S. citizen without a charge, hold them indefinitely without access to a lawyer, and even render them overseas to foreign shores where they would undoubtedly be tortured. Any of your representatives in Congress that voted for that law is a traitor. Please know what will come your way. Death, detention, prosecution. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time you is expired. Get a lawyer. You're an enemy combatant. What the hell is wrong with these people? Have they forgotten what the Constitution says? What generations of American soldiers Sailors and Marines have died and bled for. All of a sudden it's now inconvenient so it doesn't matter anymore. Thank God in Michigan and 23 other states, the National Defense Authorization Act has been nullified. That's right. Here in Michigan last year and this year too, they voted on it twice. The National Defense Authorization Act's indefinite detention provision was nullified by a unanimous vote of the Michigan House and the Michigan Senate. There were no abstentions, no presence. 
No, no votes. 100% of our state level legislators voted to nullify that treasonous legislation. So if they try that crap up here, arresting citizens of the st sovereign state of Michigan without a charge, they're going to have to go through the Michigan National Guard, the Michigan State Patrol, and more county sheriffs than they can swing a stick at before they'll be successful. I've been saying for more than two years that I believe that the current war in Syria is going to escalate into a world war and that the United States will be dragged into it. This is actually the Gog-Magog War. I've had two guests now, both former agents of the CIA that have confirmed this from a secular viewpoint and a third from a religious one. You can click any of these three links to be taken to those interviews. But you especially need to watch the interview with CIA spy Reza Khalili. He's an Iranian national who infiltrated the Revolutionary Guard Corps and spied for the United States for years. You need to watch that interview because it encapsulates how I believe an electromagnetic pulse will be used to wipe out every microchip in the United States. That means that there will be no more internet, no cell phones, no radios, except ham radios that operate on, on vacuum tubes instead of microchips. In other words, there will be no way for patriots to communicate with each other to coordinate a defense. When that EMP hits, you will effectively be cut off from the outside world. Not only will communications be down, but there will be no more deliveries of groceries and medicines to your local stores. Whatever's on the store shelves when that EMP hits will be the last mass-produced goods that you will ever see. There will be no police, fire, or other emergency services. You're going to be on your own. All of their vehicles will have been knocked out by the EMP just like yours. You won't even be able to get a glass of water out of your tap because all of the pumps that drive them, drive the water to your tap, are computer controlled. So unless you have a a hand pump in your backyard in a well, you're going to be thirsty in short order. Dr. Peter Vincent Pry of the Congressional EMP Commission said that when an EMP strikes, the country will be thrown back to horse and buggy days, back to the 1800s, and we don't have the infrastructure in place that will support 313 million people. Everything runs by computers. And when they're gone, when vehicles don't run anymore, your world is going to consist of where you can walk or where you can ride your horse to, where you can ride your bike to. And Dr. Price says that between 75 and 90 percent of the U.S. population will be dead from disease, starvation, and simple chaos within one year. Yeah, I, I think that this, this is the best way for the powers that be to implement Agenda 21. An EMP is, is basically the same as it's the same doctrine as, as using neutron bombs from back in the 70s. You kill all the people but leave the infrastructure intact. It's better than unleashing a, 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 a virus because viruses can mutate. They, you know, they may have a vaccine for the current form of the virus, but what happens if it mutates? And then they're dead too. You know, they, they don't want to start a full-out nuclear war because that would poison uh, the surface of the planet. That wouldn't help them either. The best way, the easiest way, the Occam's razor way of killing a majority of the people in this country is with an electromagnetic pulse. No fuss, no muss. So many convince are converging at once, it would literally take me hours to properly explain it all. But if you go back and watch the videos that I've linked in this show, it'll give you a pretty good idea of where we stand. Now, time is running out, my friends, and we need to wake people up. Share this video, not only on your Facebook timeline, but in each and every group to which you belong. Tweet it. Put it up in forums. 
then send it to your entire email list and then send up smoke signals. Yell it from the rooftops. We need to wake people up. If you love your friends and family, the time for worrying that they're going to think that you're a religious nut job and a, a tinfoil hat wearing wacko is over. Okay, we are running out of time. If you don't wake them up, if you don't prepare them and yourselves, you're going to die. I can't be much more clearer than that. Make sure that you like The Truth is Viral on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and join our forum at ttiv.forummotion.com. Subscribe to The Truth is Viral blog at bobpowell.blogspot.com for the latest updates. And while you're there, please click on the PayPal button and donate to The Truth is Viral. If I had the funds to rent a car and, and the gas to put in it, I'd be down in Grayling checking out this story right now. But the truth is, I'm broke. <laughs> When I started this show and re first reported a $200 monthly income, they took away $600 in my disability benefits, and they took away my Medicaid. And I've been depending on that to keep me alive I, because I am disabled. You guys only see the best of me. There are treatments that I need to keep me alive. And I'm not, I haven't had them for a year. Uh, I've yet to make as much money producing this show as I was just sitting on the couch collecting disability benefits. And your donations literally keep my family fed. I'm not as worried about the Medicaid, though, because I really don't believe that it's going to be too long before there won't be any medical services to be had at any price, unless you want to barter a house call with your family physician for a chicken or something like that. Uh, I'm depending on the grace of God and the protection of the Holy Spirit to keep this battered sack of meat upright <laughs> until we get those new bodies that we've been promised. Raise your head and rejoice. The King is coming. But until then, the most important thing you can do is keep me and my family in your prayers. And remember to share this show. We've got to get this information out there. Those are the two most important things that you can do to help us right now. Help us in our fight to save lives and win souls for Jesus Christ in these very last days. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell. And as always, God bless, Semper Fi, and Oorah. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth is Viral. Like The Truth is Viral on Facebook, and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com.